we want to just, first of all, welcome you all. We're really happy that you were able to come to this session. And my name is Rose White. I work in the Office of Graduate Studies in a variety of areas, and you have been and probably will be receiving emails from me from time to time. Um, today, we have a couple of goals for this session. Um, first and foremost, we want this to be an opportunity for you to visit with current grad students and talk about the grad school experience and get some of their best advice. And second, we want to be able to answer your questions. Um, but we also know that some of you are going to have questions that are specific to your programs and disciplines. And many of those will be best answered by the grad coordinators or maybe a specialist from grad studies who, who isn't here today. Um, so we will be gathering those questions and we're going to follow up with answers, which we'll be sending out to you via email and then also posting to our website with more detailed answers. Um, so first today though, we'll hear briefly from a couple of my fellow grad studies staff members and from the current grad students who have joined us. And then we are gonna open it up for chat. So um, Sarah, would you start us off? Sure. Hi, I'm Sarah um, Lehner. I work as an academic evaluator in the grad studies department. Um, so I'll be helping you um, when, well, if your last name begins with A through M, <laughs> um, when you're trying to move through your program and, and get through to graduation, and then as well as awarding your degree at the end. So if you ever have any questions about policies or about can I do this or that? Or how do I drop a class? How do I add a class? All those types of things. You can contact us and we can help you with that. Um, basically, if you have a question about anything on campus, you can contact us. And if we don't know the answer, we'll help you find someone who does. Um, one of the things that I get to do, um, that's one of my favorite parts of my job, is work with the Graduate Equity Fellowship Program. Um, which is one of the financial resources um, available through our office in conjunction with the um, Chancellor's office. And um, so I just want to talk a little bit quickly about um, some of the different funding opportunities available. Um, Rose posted these on our website under the new student orientation section, which I think you'll find um, if you go to the uh, current student section. Um, and so besides the Graduate Equity Fellowship Program, um, we also um, have two other programs run through the um, Chancellor's Office. Um, the uh, Pre-Doctoral Scholarship Program is a chance to get $3,000 if you're interested in pursuing um, a PhD to um, cover application fees, school visits, GRE courses, things like that. And then there's one called the Chancellor's Doctoral Incentive Program, which is a uh, um, 30,000 up to 30,000 in forgivable loans. Um, and then there are also opportunities you can find sometimes um, in your department or through financial aid. So definitely pursue those as well. Um, and if you have questions about any of those types of things, um, get in touch with me or um, you'll see if you look at the document Rose posted on our website, um, contact information for Matt Thomas, um, who's the faculty coordinator in those programs. Um, but there, just know there's stuff out there and um, any questions you have, I would love to talk with you about that. And I think that's all for me. Carson, you wanna go next? Sure. Hi everyone. Uh, my name is Carson Medley and I'm the thesis editor and advisor in the grad studies office and also the grad coordinator for interdisciplinary studies. And um, some of you, I recognize your faces. You've been coming to my writing workshops. I appreciate that. And um, I'll be given a lot more of those throughout the semester. And um, I'm available for you to, to just help you along the lines with academic research and writing, anything that's writing related. Um, I'm the, the 
Tony Robbins of the comma, right? I love punctuation, any kind of writing stuff I can help you with. And yeah, I look forward to seeing uh, more of you. Thank you for coming today. How about you, Nilu? Would you like to introduce yourself and talk a little bit about your program? Sure. Um, so I'm Nilu. I'm a social work major, studying master's degree in social work. Um, I'm an outreach coordinator with Adelante. Um, do you want me to talk about that or? Whatever you'd like to. Okay, so basically for those of you who don't know, Adelante is a post-bachelor pipeline program. It's, um, we support Latinx and low-income students, first-generation students. Um, basically, we open our arms to any students that need support. Um, we help with different um, jobs. If you need jobs, we support you with that. Um, we have a specific job, so um, in, in terms of mentoring, um, being a mentor if you're a graduate student and being a mentee if you're undergrad or new graduate student. And um, we, so job opportunities, we provide research opportunities. So if you have some ideas and you're like, oh, I don't want to do thesis or I do want to do thesis, I need some financial support to do what you want to do. I have some ideas. You can come to us and we will find a way to help you out. Um, I mentioned the mentoring program. We have a lot of stuff with Adelante, which I'm sure we're going to cover. But yeah, so I'm very good at finding strength in people, mentoring people. I can help with advising if you need it. I'm a first generation, so I struggled a lot until I got to where I am. So I can really help you, you know, figure it out, figure out, like take it step by step, hold your hand if you know, if you need me to, not right now, though, you know, because of COVID, but someday. Um, <laughs> right. So, um, yeah, we're just here to support you. Thanks, Nilu. Isaiah, would you like to introduce yourself? Sure. Hello, I'm Isaiah. Um, I'm a student assistant in the Office of Graduate Studies. So, uh, if our office were open, you would come in and see me sitting at the front desk answering your questions and answering the phone and stuff. Um, I'm also in the English department as a graduate student. This is my hopefully last year. I should have this semester and one more left. Um, I'm doing literature studies right now, but also a lot of literacy things. Um, yeah, I'll be teaching my first course this semester, which is very exciting. That's cool. What course? Um, English 264W, which is uh, American Regional and Ethnic Writers. Sounds fancy. It's not. It's fun. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Claire, would you like to tell us a little bit about yourself and your role? Sure. Um, so, hi, um, I'm Claire McMillan. Um, so, I am in the MPA, the Public Administration Master's Program, um, but today I'm here to represent the Council of Graduate Students, or COGS for short. Um, so, the purpose of COGS is basically just uh, we want to provide graduate students with the opportunity to connect and network with each other um, across disciplines. So, it's not just for MPAs or for social work or for English. It's everybody is invited and we encourage you to come. Um, and I'll talk about that in a second. So we get together and we share ideas and opportunities. Um, we've, we've been planning events for graduate students. We had to uh, postpone one at the end of last semester, but that just means we have extra things planned for this semester for funsies. Um, but we also get together to talk about the different issues that have been arising for us as students. Um, and we've had a lot of those obviously with the COVID-19 situation. Um, so we also get to make sure that your concerns and suggestions are uh, taken seriously and that your educational needs are met um, and the people who need to hear about your concerns get to hear about your concerns. So we have a, um, a seat at the grad council table and so we get to talk with all the different department heads and staff about what you guys have been telling us and hopefully get those things taken care of. 
Um, so just, we're here if you need us, the Council of Graduate Students, again, uh, if you go onto the Chico State website, we're under the Grad Studies Department site, and my contact information is there, I believe. If it's not, you can email Grad Studies and they'll forward it on to me. Um, Nilu and Vanya's here too, yeah, Vanya, are both in COGS, and we're getting Isaiah and Jimmy and a couple other people on board as well. So you guys should come and join us. Um, so we are going to try to get together weekly via Zoom, of course. Um, but it's a really, it's a great place just to get together and talk with the grad students. And like I said, um, bring us information that you want people who are making the decisions to hear because we have the ear and we can bring up, bring that up. So yeah, be on the lookout for emails from us. Well, from grad studies on behalf of us, but yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Claire. Yeah. Angie, would you like to introduce yourself? Hi, I am Angie. <laughs> I am also in the public administration uh, program. Um, I am a criminal justice advisor and I am also working for Adelante as a coordinator slash now to be mentor. Um, this is going to be my second year, um, also first uh, generation a student. Um, other than that, I think that's it. Thank you, Angie. Vanya, would you introduce yourself? Hi, everyone. My name is Vanya Buck. I am a grad student at the Social Work Program. Um, I'm also part of the Title IV E program with the School of Social Work. So if anybody um, is in that program and you are interested in the Title IV E program, it's um, basically funding. Um, and it really gives you a lot of funding up to $36,000 for your grad program. So if you guys are interested in that, let me know. Nilu is also part of that program so that we have two um, grad students here that know that program. Um, I am also an Adelante uh, outreach coordinator. So we're doing a lot of outreach for our undergrads to come to grad school. And then like Nilu mentioned, um, Adelante is a great program to not only support our undergrads, but our grad students too. Um, we're employed there right now part-time. So it's that extra income that we get because I can't have a full-time job with grad school and an internship and all that stuff. So it's a great, great support, um, a great program to be involved with. Um, so if you have any questions about that, I'm always looking for funding. Um, one recommendation or advice is if there is like an opportunity for like a stipend, a fellowship or anything, apply for it because you never know um, what kind of funding you can get. And it's literally my whole grad program is paid for. Um, so I really encourage you, um, even if you're already going to start this fall, you still have, you know, more time to apply for the different opportunities um, that the school offers. So if you have any questions about anything of that social work, Title for e let me know. Thank you, Vanya. Jimmy, would you like to say a little bit about yourself? Sure, absolutely. My name is Jimmy Bradley. I am an interdisciplinary studies uh, graduate student. Um, also, an Adelante coordinator over the summer. I'm also part of the Graduate Equity Fellowship. And yeah, this is my going to be my second year as a grad student. Thank you, Jimmy. Gary, would you like to introduce yourself? Yeah. Hey, everybody. I'm Gary Day. Um, I am a grad student, just like all of you here on Chico State's campus. I'm over in the Recreation, Hospitality, and Parks Management, working on that Recreation Administration uh, Masters. Um, I also work alongside everyone before me in the Adelante program. Uh, another place that I work is the ecological reserves that are a part of the CSU Chico. Um, I actually was outside all day in the field cutting brush, so it's fun out there. If you guys are interested in nature and all that stuff, I'm your guy to get you hooked up with all that. Um, in addition to all the grad life stuff, um, I've also taught a bunch of classes in my time here. Um, enjoy your time in grad school, 30 units, and those go by really quick. So all I have left is my thesis. I'll be hanging out with Carson um, for the rest of my time here. But yeah, if you guys have any questions about what it's like to teach classes, um, anything grad life in general, I'm your guy. Thank you, Gary. and. Um... So we'll open it up to you all and feel free to ask anybody questions or just, uh, you know, talk amongst yourselves. Too. 
Rose, I have a question for our student panelists. If um, some of them wouldn't mind hopping in. This is Sharon Barrios. I'm the Dean of Graduate Studies and I'm trying to be quiet because I wanted to hear the student voices on this. But I was, um, you know, the thing that I could have really heard more from or more about when I was entering into grad school is actually from other graduate students about, you know, if you could do go back to the, the beginning, right? What are some of the things that uh, you would do maybe differently or the things that you did or the advice that you got that was really helpful for you. So maybe what are some things you could have done differently to kind of figure things out quicker or maybe things that, um, you know, from the beginning started you out. So I'm kind of interested to hear from you about some of the challenges that you faced, how you've overcome them, good advice that you would share with the other students. I know you all have it because <laughs> no, I don't want to be a loud mouth. Somebody talk something. first. I'll go second. <laughs> you want to go first? <laughs> Nilu, I know you got something. I will go then. I will go. <laughs> there <you> go. <laughs> so my first semester, I was so anxious. I didn't know what to expect. I was like, oh my God, it's gonna be too much. I can't handle this. And I got an internship and I, 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 I. but within a couple of weeks, just time management, you know, scheduling everything, writing down everything. I write down everything. Uh, and it's all about time management. You can handle it. You're here for a reason. And it's not that difficult if you manage your time wisely. Yes, I can piggyback, piggyback off of that a little bit because you kind of touched on like the imposter syndrome thing. And I remember them going that over that when I, did my grad school orientation and I had never even really heard of that before and I realized that I've been dealing with that like my whole life being like oh sure I'll just try that and I don't think I'm really going to make it but let's just see what happens and then you're like oh but so just basically trust yourself everybody at some point in their grad school career goes am I supposed to be here or did they make a mistake like this is really hard and I don't I don't think I can do it but you can you just have to like ask questions know your advisor like if this was normal school you could, like I would definitely say anytime you're at campus like stop and see if your advisor's there and drop in and just ask a question of some kind you want them to know your face so that you can feel comfortable going in and being like I'm just really confused about what to do with my classes because I like this because of this or I like this because of that and just don't be afraid to be honest about your struggles with your advisors, your teachers, and also like your fellow classmates because everybody is feeling that stress. And especially now with everything being so different, like none of us is an expert at doing grad school the way we're about to do it. Um, so we're all in this together trying to figure it out. So don't be afraid to be like, ah, this is scary. What do I do? So I've been doing that a lot. <laughs> I'd say to back off of that, if that's okay with everyone, um, just being the, af the afraid part, because I was super shy, and I also come from a background that I'm told, you know what, you got to sit down and don't talk unless you're being talked to or asked a question, and I didn't know if it's okay for me to go email a professor who I've, I have never met before. Are they going to be annoyed with me? Are they going to be like, oh, you asked so many questions, or, you know, just my recommendation is that take a chance walk up to the professors email them um most professors they will love to tell you about their struggles and then once they start talking you'll be like oh my god i can relate so don't be afraid um do email professors and the more um a lot of times you're not sure of how like again being a first generation mm -hmm. I didn't have the background. My parents didn't have the background. I didn't know what to, uh, what sort of questions to ask, or what, how do I find a job? How do I do a thesis? And once you find your advisor, and the way you find that is by going, emailing, introducing yourself, right? And um, once you find them, they would be able to tell you tips and tricks in terms of finding jobs and because we go to graduate school to hopefully get a job right and you can it, it's all about that networking part so just my recommendation is don't be shy 
um, email the professors, email the deans, email um, different agencies. They would love to tell you about their jobs and like what they, uh, I mean, imagine when someone asks you questions about you, don't you love to tell them about that, your accomplishments? Do the same thing for them. So again, make sure you email them, build your network. That is the most important thing in you know being a student that I have found. I wanted to add that um, I'm not sure if um, everybody here is locally, but I moved here from San Diego. So coming from Southern California, moving up to Northern California was a huge change for me um, and a culture shock. So I think what helped me my first year of grad school, um, you have this mentality that you're going to be super busy with school and you don't have time to join organizations or different programs. But I, I, I beg to differ because I feel that I, because I was able to join different organizations and programs and clubs, um, I was able to meet more people and that's how I got a part-time job. That's how I got involved in, you know, the Council of Graduate Students. And I think now it's even, um, I think a little bit easier because we're virtual. So um, you're able to attend those meetings um, that you weren't maybe able to attend before because they were on campus or because it like, it was between classes or anything like that. So I think um, one thing that I, it really helped me a first year last year was um, getting involved and meeting new people um, because sometimes you'd like to stay in your program. So for me, I just knew all my social work people, but now I feel like I know a whole bunch of people in different programs and we even have shared experiences um, like writing a thesis. I can ask, you know, my fellow people from other organizations like, hey, you're in your second year of doing your thesis. Um, can you help me out or what did you do? How, how can I get to where you're at? So I think that was very helpful to get to know other people from other programs. I really like that part too. Sorry, <laughs> go ahead. <laughs> the only thing I would add to all of that because I completely agree with everything that has been said so far is that um, many of your professors are also first gen too. So like they know what it's like to feel the imposter syndrome. They are feeling it still, some of them. Um, so if you're ever concerned about any of that stuff, like reach out to them. They, they wouldn't have chosen this career if they didn't want to help you. Yeah, I've noticed that professors really, really um, appreciate grad students when you, and if you want to ask them questions like everybody's been saying about their own experiences or be like, hey, I'm having this problem with this and that. Um, in general, most of the professors want to help you out and they really like master's degree students. Uh, I would say more than my experience of being an undergrad, um, but I didn't go to Chico State, so maybe your, your professors are different, but I always felt like I was kind of like encroaching on professors' time as an undergrad, whereas now it feels like they want to reach out and see what you're doing or what your research is about or um, what's an, if you saw an interesting thing that you guys have talked about in class, if you forward that to them, you'll start an email chain and you'll be like, oh, emailing with your professor, this is cool. So definitely take, take the risks like Neela was saying and reach out. Do the thing. <laughs> yeah, I think like with um, classes, like the class size, I feel like had a lot to do with um, me being able to reach out to professors. Um, like everybody has talked about the imposter syndrome. I felt that so heavy my first semester. Um, I freaked out. I was just like, okay, um, did they make a mistake? Like maybe. You know, I don't know, like maybe there was a mistake somewhere down the line, but I spoke to one of my, um, one of my professors that I like admire a lot. You know, I consider that professor very, very smart. And when I talked to that professor about how I was feeling, they told me they felt the same way. And I was like super surprised, like no way, like you, not you, like really, you know? So I was like, it was a big deal. I was like, wow, like anybody and everybody like, it and like somebody else mentioned it like they still feel it um so for 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 that feeling to to probably happen the first even second semester as well like it's normal just don't be afraid you know you're here that like everybody said they chose you for a reason and um show your potential show that you're very um dedicated to this program um you're obviously you obviously chose this um your specific program for a reason 
um, your passion, you're going to be devoted to it. So I feel like that also helped me um, re really focus on those few classes that I will be taking. And that um, also made my focus just like for me, full time is three classes. I'm pretty sure that's for all of the programs at Chico State. So um, that from five, six classes, undergrad to like three classes, that made a huge difference. Um, so I was able to actually just focus on those specific classes and having small classroom sizes made me even be able to go in and pop, pop in into their um, office hours. And if that didn't work, I would also like try to like ask for a schedule to schedule a meeting with them. And they also really go out of their way to um, go make make it work for your schedule because they know that you're also um, you're doing your master's and you're busy as well um, I maybe I'm talking I'm being biased because I'm a Chico State student I was here from undergrad but I think all the professors are here for a reason they want to help you they want to help you succeed and that's what they're here for so, yeah and uh, professors are holding virtual office hours and they will be posted on the department's websites um, people are going to be accessible, um, just so you know that. Um, all, almost all of the classes will be online, as most of you know, um, and they have made provisions for uh, continuing to have communication, you know, open communication and support for students. Um, so, you know, always feel free to contact the department, contact the graduate coordinator, contact graduate studies. Um, if you have questions, if you want to meet with someone, they will set up a Zoom meeting. So it's, and nobody minds an email. Um, you know, we're happy to hear from you. Even if it feels like it's super late at night and it might be weird that you're like sending an email at that time, that, that's the great thing about emails is that they'll just get it when they wake up. <laughs> And then you'll probably wake up to one because if you stayed up that late, you're not going to be up when they wake up. So it works out. <laughs> also, I really want to return to the thing that Jimmy talked about, which is like writing everything down that you need to, because like that's super important. I never had to do that in undergrad, um, but grad school, like there will be, there will, you'll get to a point where you will be overwhelmed. Like it's just going to happen. Um, but if you've written things down and you trust the things that you've written down, it will help you sleep so much better. And when, when you wake up in the middle of the night, like, oh, did I remember to do that thing? And you'd be like, no, I, I wrote it down. Like, I got this. Uh, so get a really good planner. Yes. Like this. Yeah, get a it has planner. a whole one day, it gets its whole own page. That's the best thing ever. Yeah. Just saying. <laughs> It'll just keep you from full on panicking many times if you have it written down. Like there's too much stuff to hold in your human brain. So offload some of it onto paper. That's why we invented it. Are there questions from people? You know, um, we did receive other questions and um, someone did ask about the um, textbook and um, Nilu got the um, link for us to include, and it is on the bookstore. So the bookstore, um, Chico State Wildcat Bookstore has an online uh, website, and that is how you find out what the books are for your class. Um, Nilu, do you wanna go into any more detail on that? Um, we will be sending that to you. Okay. You know, so I, um, we, we're going to send a link to you guys, so don't worry about it. But what I, wa what I do want to mention is that, you know, I know life can be challenging and you have to budget, you know, because school's expensive. <laughs> and I am a paper person, so I really like physical books. But, you know, it don't try to take advantage of your digi digital books as well. There are so many PDFs out there. I found so many of my books for free. If you can't afford it, talk to your professor. And sometimes they tell you you can, you know, get a different version of edition of the book. Um, sometimes they have a copy of the book. So it's similar to undergrad. And it has a lot to do with your communication, right? You know, just 
taking the initiative to talk to your professor, explain your situation, and then they can give you different ways that you could, you know, find this specific book. Because, you know, they did a lot of research to find that book, to present it to you, right? So they know where you can find a book for a lot cheaper. So I would say definitely go to them. And um, usually all the books are listed in the bookstore website under um, textbooks. Um, but if you don't see it, um, that's okay. Just some professors take longer to find the best book for you. Um, and yeah, I, you know, if you really, really can afford the book, you can always talk to one of your classmates and share the book. I've done that before too. Um, it is a struggle and, you know, you, you, you got to buy food first, they pay your bills first before get textbooks. So, and professors are very understanding. And what I have seen in my classes is that a lot of times professors rely more on articles than pre-reviewed journals rather than books. So I would just keep that in mind as well. Um, yeah, just send an email to professor and then see if they really want you to buy the book. Um, but yeah, and again, the link you will definitely send out to you. I think it's- Also, um, I it was want to um, mention that we will also be posting um, information from the Chico State Library and they have lots of information on how they can help you with textbooks and articles and things like that. Um, they have subject librarians who love working with graduate students. Um, one of the uh, orientation presentations that we have posted on our new student orientation website um, goes into uh, some information about what the library has. And the dean of the library has absolutely underscored how much the subject librarians love working with grad students. And they have lots of resources for you. We'll be posting some more specifics on that. Um, just wanted to let you know that. Um, yeah. Go ahead, so Claire. The, sorry, it's on the library thing, and I went before we get off the library topic. I just wanted to mention that um, for each, I've only been here, this is my third semester, but for both of the semesters, I went online um, to the Miriam Library website, and you can search for your textbook names there and the edition and everything. And the library has had, I think, like, like I would say about 50% of the books I've been able to like check out from the library, but I noticed after my first semester, it was better for me to have my own textbook because I want to be able to underline and highlight and stuff. So that's something you'll have to figure out for yourself. Um, but also I would suggest, because it works for me, ha having a PDF version and a text version if you can, because um, there's sometimes when you're looking at your computer all day and then you're like, I cannot sit here and read 20 pages of this now and like going back and forth on the PDF or whatever, but it is really good to have when you're like, oh, what's that, that, um, that one phrase that I'm looking for that I read maybe 10 pages ago, you can just go control F and you can find that exact thing on a PDF where you can't do that on a textbook. But so they both are pros and cons. And so that's why I just have both of them and I figured it out. Um, and oh, the other cool thing with the library is if they don't have it in our actual library, they have interlibrary loans that they can do. And so they'll tell you like if CSU Channel Islands has a copy, they can, they will request it for you and then you can get a copy too. So um, library is a really great place to start for your textbooks. And then a Libris and good books are, or good reads, sorry, are the two that have um, used textbooks that you can get to. And I've gotten textbooks for like two bucks there before. So if you do some research, you can find them for cheap and you can get exactly what you need. You know, on the top of the library, I do want to mention just something that I did not know. Um, you usually every major actually has someone that knows all about the major that works in the library, or they have a tutor um, dedicated to that major. So like for social workers, we actually have two tutors. They look over our writing, they help us edit, they help us, you know, they, they explain to us how we can make our um, paper stronger and we also have an individual in the library who can help us specifically with social work um, research so like she knows all about it um, so just kind of um, just 
keep that in mind, you know, ask your department what, uh, who your contact is in the library or as tutors. And the library website has a list of the subject librarians. Um, so you can find that information there as well. And they really are very, very available. You can chat with the librarian and ask them, you know, is, am I correct? Is this the right person for me in my discipline? Is this the subject librarian? They, you know, they have a, a person there to chat with you all the time. Um, so they're very, very accessible and they will make Zoom meetings for you. They will, um, you know, meet with you one-on-one, -on -one, but they'll also do sessions for people maybe in your same cohort. Um, so they're, they're really, really um, helpful and available. So. Another uh, question that we got in uh, had to do with networking and we've talked a little bit about networking with the uh, council. It is a good place to go. Um, networking through your department or um, different clubs uh, as um, Vanya has mentioned. Um, but also feel free to contact any of us um, if you want some more leads for where you think might be um, helpful um, for networking. Rose, this is Sharon Mario. Um, I would suggest that maybe if students have questions, they can either raise their hand or um, put their question in the chat, and then that way you'll know what uh, they're thinking they want to know about. I want to add something for networking. Um, please, again, I, I cannot stress this enough because I have known students who are just, oh my God, so smart and just, they have such a talent for like the, the subjects that they're doing, that they're studying. And I'm like, you got to put yourself out there. You need to take a chance and talk to individuals who are doing your, the job that you wish to do and contact them and figure out how, ask them, how did you get to where you are today? And trust me, they would be more than happy to tell you how they got there. And um, I give you an example. There was this, um, not an internship, a volunteering thing that I was trying to do. And I really wanted to, I mean, at the end of the workout because of the COVID, but it was uh, basically you would have shadowed a representative in a Sacramento downtown, the government thing. And um, I went to their website and I searched who looks over the applications and I found them um, in LinkedIn and I messaged them and she was so welcoming. She actually called me the next day and she was like, yeah, let me tell you what you do here. So do not be shy, do contact them, find them on LinkedIn. There's a reason they put themselves on LinkedIn. Trust me, it's either for them to get job opportunities or get to know other people who are also interested in the same major or job. So, if you find them on LinkedIn, not on Facebook and stuff, that's too creepy, but if you find them on LinkedIn or in Chico State website with like in the directory, they are putting themselves out there to help you out, to answer your questions. So take the chance and um, send them an email, you know, as long as you're being respectful and just um, honest about, you know, what you're looking for, um, then they, they would be very open to answering and helping you out. So make, make sure you take advantage of your resources. Yeah, it's not like to add something if I could. <laughs> um, regarding networking, I, I think I have seen so many students in eight years that have gone on to graduate programs, doctorate programs, where their mentors or where their committee chair went. And uh, that's a great way to network, as I posted in the chat here. Find out where 
where your, your, your mentors went to college and graduate school, because that will take you very far. Yeah, I would say like when, when you meet your professors, I think that's like obviously like one of the most important like parts um, going into grad school, really um, checking in, dropping on office hours, I mean, even if it's just to chat for a little bit. Um, when you tell them about what you'd like to eventually work in, what's, you know, your interests, what are your dreams, your goals, your aspirations, whenever you share those kind of things, they actually keep you in mind for one thing because you stop by, you know, you get to talk to them, you get, they get to know you as well. Um, and they keep you in mind for, for even jobs as well. They can recommend you, they can be your letter of reference recommendation, anything like that. That's one of the biggest things I would say, um, networking, start with professors. I mean, they most of them have their, you know, have obviously like a very high education and experience. Um, a lot of my professors have so many, so much experience as a background. Um, they've done a lot of things, a lot of research, written a lot of articles, um, and they are and can be a very great source of connection and networking. Um, you know, it's like a, it's like a little, um, what is it, little like dot, little dots where they just kind of connect. You know, they can connect you to somebody who, you know you didn't even know existed and it could be a great opportunity for just experience and just like things like that. It's a great source of um, an opportunity and a great beginning to start with um, networking. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if you go into like your program page, I know at least in the MPA program, they have um, like the, they have the faculty in there and you can read like a little blurb about uh, like who they are, like what their research was in and what they did their dis dissertation on, what their recent research is on and also like where they went to school. Um, and that was one of the ways I even picked Chico State in the first place was I looked and I saw that there were multiple professors that were that were into the same sorts of research topics that I was into. And I even picked my my first semester of classes that way. I was like, I, I already know that I want to meet this teacher because of this reason. And I already know that I want like this person's the internship coordinator or whatever. So I want to meet them. And whatever. so it's it's like like Angie said, putting all the dots together, like doing the research to see like what fits best with your plan. It's like the stars aligning doing your education. <laughs> um, also, we have had a question about just, you know, the steps that you take to progress through your program. Um, you know, you can always talk to the grad evaluators, Sarah and Roseanne, um, in our office, also on our website we have um, information about the progression to your degree. So you can find information on several different areas of our website. Also, I would recommend um, that you um, definitely check out our guide to, new, uh, guide to new graduate students, for new graduate students on our website. Um, because that does give you a very brief overview about the steps that you should take and when. Um, but we also have specific web pages that will go in a little bit more detail on that. Um, so just, you know, CSU Chico slash graduate studies is, it's, um, you know, a good place to start so that you can look at the information that's there and then if you have questions about what's there, then you can just feel free to contact any of us. You can always email graduate studies at csuchico.edu, or you can email specific folks like your, your particular um, evaluator, you know, if Sarah is your evaluator, if you're A through M with your last name, or you can um, email Roseanne Knoyer um, and all of our contact information is on that website. Uh, if you want to talk to somebody directly, you can email and we can set up a Zoom meeting. So. And I'll just add oh, go ahead. All right, go ahead. I was just going to say, um, we're more than happy to do um, email introductions for you as well. So if you've got a question, like I said earlier, and and if we don't know the answer, we aren't the right person, or you just don't want to cold contact someone out of the blue, email me or Roseanne, and we're happy to do an introduction email for you and explain what you're looking for. 
um, to get you your answer, get, get your need met that way. I was just gonna say the same thing. This is so funny. <laughs> I was just gonna say, you know, if you feel like, oh my God, I don't wanna, you know, these people are just so professional. I mean, honestly, I'm just a student here, okay? <laughs> I do get paid to read the I'm an average coordinator, but I'm a student, social work major. So if you wanna just email a student, I'm gonna be like, hey girl, I don't know what I'm doing. Help me with this. I also would be more than happy to con connect you with someone else who can help you. And um, if you want me there, be there, you know, during the Zoom and be like, here, introduction, I'd be more than happy. And I know everyone else here, the other girls, they, and guys, they are awesome. So um, don't, don't be shy, you know, um, this is, this is the first step, just this is your networking right there. You know, you're networking at, when you get in touch with us. I know a lot of people, um, I have awesome networks, like my network, you, you will go crazy if I show you my list of networking. So just um, let me know what you need and I can always connect you with someone who can help you regardless of what it is. So. Kim, I wanted to kind of talk about your question about um, like the classes. I we'll think- just put a link in there, by the way, for oh. what you were just about to say. Oh, like well, I was, I was just gonna talk about my personal experience last semester because we shifted from in-class to virtual. Um, and it really depends. I mean, I think it was a transition for all of us and we didn't know what it was gonna look like. Um, but I feel like now when we start the new semester, I feel like it's gonna, each professor is gonna have their own um, way of doing it. But the way some of my classes were, um, was we would meet at a regular time, but we wouldn't be there for the whole time because it's just like, you get so tired of just staring at a screen. Um, and there were other professors who recorded, recorded a, a lecture for like, 30 minutes to an hour. So then we watched that for before our class. Um, and then we came into our Zoom class and had a discussion about it. Um, that way you're not there for the whole three hours. I mean, I don't know how long your classes are gonna be, but ours were like three hours. Um, so that was a good balance. Um, and our professors are super flexible. I think we were not expecting this um, and they were very, very understanding. Um, I think a lot of, with a lot of our assignments, um, some of them, they were even canceled because of the nature of the assignment. Um, I think it also opened up for a lot of creativity from the students and the professors. Um, I know some of mine, I had to do uh, like a 20 page paper and I was like, okay, I don't, mentally I don't, I'm not there. So can I um, instead do a PowerPoint presentation? And she loved that. So then I just did a one-on-one -on -one with her. So I think our professors were super flexible and I think they're just gonna continue to be that. Um, and like, if you ever have any issue, uh, email them. They are willing to work with you because we're all going through it at different levels. Um, and I think it's, I think they're willing to work with you um, because like everybody has said, they're there to help you. So, I mean, I think it's also like for me, I'm like kind of anxious to know like, how is my professor gonna do it? Like, are they all gonna be the same and stuff like that. So um, just know that they're gonna be super flexible. Um, so yeah, what I put on here for um, for figuring out like specifically what classes you're signed up for and if they're going to be synchronous or asynchronous. Um, now I'm I'm not 100% sure if it's on all of them. I haven't gone through and looked at like all of the different programs and stuff. But I know that for mine, I just opened it um, and it's in the link that I sent uh, in the group chat. Um, if you go there, find your class. It should say underneath it. For example, mine says online synchronous. This section is fully online and meets in real time at the scheduled meeting day and times. Um, some class meeting, meetings may be replaced by asynchronous activities. Refer to the course syllabus for details. So they, and then there was, there's a couple of them that say online asynchronous. And so there will not be any Zoom meetings. It'll all just be like assignments that you're gonna be submitting to Blackboard and stuff like that. So um, for your specific classes, you should be able to figure out what to expect at this point. If they don't know already, then you might want to figure out looking at a different class. <laughs> well, 
going to add on that. Um, I just finished the virtual conference, Go Virtual, that like over 300 faculty took on the over the summer um, to adapt their classes to being virtual. Because a lot of them have never taught this way before. Um, and we, one of the things we discussed was how synchronous a synchronous class is going to be. Um, so like, like my class that I'm teaching on that list says synchronous, but and then it says to refer to the syllabus, but so does someone else's. And mine's only meeting once a week. Theirs might be meeting twice a week. So you really need to like look at your individual syllabus to know exactly how often you're going to be meeting. Um, and then if those synchronous meeting times are even mandatory. Um, so you, you they might have a scheduled Zoom meeting once a week, but if for whatever reason you can't come, they'll have other ways of you making up that gap in, in the time to them. So it, you'll really have to like look at your individual class. Um, and as far as um, whether they know or not, they should know sometime this week because all of our materials from the conference that we had to give to the school were due uh, Tuesday. So they've had a, three days since they should know for sure what they're doing. So maybe give them until next week. Well, I'm just wondering, because with the synchronous and asynchronous, like there's, um, for me, I, I can't do, I, both my classes that I took last semester turned into just synchronous or asynchronous, which means no in class, no Zoom, anything, no, no interaction other than like discussion board, blackboard things at a certain time. And that is not, that didn't work for me. So I, I made sure that I looked at and made sure of those. So our, my question to Isaiah, since you're at the training, is are those things that are on there now going to change to be the complete opposite by any chance? Like if it says that it's going to be synchronous, could it all of a sudden switch to being asynchronous? Or is it just going to be like you said, it might be like once a week instead of twice or? Yeah, I mean, I think it could still change because I think they have until Wednesday is when contract time starts. Um, so it could still change, but I highly doubt that it will this late. Um, if I think if they knew it was going to change, they would have informed the school uh, before now. Mm -hmm. So if it says asynchronous, it'll probably stay asynchronous. And if it says synchronous, it'll probably stay synchronous. But then individual interpretations of what synchronous means, like professor to professor, could be different. So. For Jack's question, I was I can't remember when we get syllabi either. Does anybody else know the answer to that question? Usually, it's like the week before, if not like two or three days. At least for like most of my professors, like two or three days um, before class or Usually the day email of us, class. Right? Yeah, yeah. They have it, uh, yeah on Blackboard that's saying that they're going to start and um, adding our classes on Friday. So I would check um, by next week. Um, and I'm pretty sure the syllabus is going to be there. Yeah, that, that said, though, I've noticed in grad school, um, professors tend to do those syllabi last because um, they know that you're more experienced just as a student. So they, they prioritize getting their syllabi out to their undergrad students. And so I've had some come like the day before class or like literally the first day of class. They just tell us that they've put it on Blackboard five minutes ago. <laughs> Yeah, you can you can email your specific professors too if you know who it is um, and you you can get any of their emails on the faculty directory on Chico State website um, and ask them in advance most of them even if they don't have their like finalized thing with like you're going to be reading these pages on this date or whatever. Um, a lot of them have at least taught this class once before and will be willing to send you like an old syllabus with the with the, like the agreement that you know that that's not what you're going to be taking it could change and stuff. Um, I think I've done that every semester and it's, I've been able to get it. And then you can order your books early too. You don't have to spend that whole first week like, I don't know what's going on or when I'm going to get it. So the student portal, what we use most often um, would be just the email portion of it, Wildcat email. Um, I would say check that twice a day, <laughs> at least. Um, Blackboard, obviously, which is same with undergrad rate. Um, student services, honestly, I just check it when I <laughs> register for classes, not as often. Um, There's a lot of cool links on there, though. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 
Um, handshake, make sure you check that out. That's where they, uh, they put some jobs. So if you're interested, um, make sure you check that out. Um, LinkedIn, um, obviously, as I mentioned, I love that. I check it out often. Just, you know, to see what options are out there to connect and build new network. But I would say the mail, uh, the email portion and the Blackboard for sure, those two check every single day. So can someone um, speak to the question of, um, you know, how do you get the Zoom meeting access code? Um, I just put it on the chat. Oh, but, great. Uh, also, I just kind of wanted to add that um, that a lot of the professors did a whole, like a little section on Blackboard and it has said like Zoom Classroom. Um, and then they also let you know, hey, this is going to be the Zoom link and the password for all of our classes for the rest of the semester. Um, they won't be, I don't, I wouldn't, I don't see them changing it every time. Um, and then also a lot of the press professors have their Zoom room for like office hours and stuff like that on their email. So sometimes I'll say, hey, like class, just go to my um, to my meeting room, but I'm sure they're gonna have a Zoom room for each of their classes. And if I'm logged into my student account on Zoom and then I use the link they give me, I've never needed a passcode to get into the Zoom meeting. Um, so if you're not logged in, you might need to ask for the, the passcode um, but I think that's usually included on the invitation. Like it'll have the link and then it'll say like password for like right below it or something. You just copy and paste it. Yeah, but like if they just have a permanent link on their Blackboard page and oh. you're not logged in, you might need the passcode for that. Or you could just log in and then it, it should work without the passcode. It'd be interesting. And just if you can't figure it out when the time comes, like even when you're about to log in or whatever, just like email your professor or you can, there's a, there's a thing on Blackboard where you can email all of the kids in your class too and be like, somebody help me figure out how to get on here. Cause I'm, that's probably going to happen to me. I'm not going to lie. I haven't, I didn't have to do the zoom class thing last semester. So I'm right there with most of you guys. <laughs> yeah. And the, the links should be coming either through email or there'll be a permanent link in the syllabus or on the Blackboard page or the website the professor is using. Um, you shouldn't get like an, a push notification from Zoom or anything like that. Or it could be a calendar invite. Um, but still, even for the calendar invite, it kind of looks yeah. like email. Yeah. So there's like a message right below it. Um, usually professors are very good, especially I would assume the first few weeks of classes, telling you, letting you know that, uh, like sending you an um, announcement or an email in Blackboard and just your uh, Wildcat email, um, just letting you know what the Zoom link is, what, this, uh, what the meeting number is, uh, just keep an eye for all that. Yeah, and always um, make it a point to check your Chico State email very often because you'll get updates from your professors, updates from your departments, from grad studies, from announcements, and there will be useful things. So yeah, just make it a point to check that regularly. And if you let it go too many days, it gets overwhelming and then you never want to check it ever again. So if you check it like every day, well, then you're better off. <laughs> just add it. I also want to mention that um, Blackboard email is different than um, your Wildcat email. Uh, oh. You could have it be forwarded to your Wildcat email. I think um, it does already. Well, it depends on the settings. Hopefully it does. <laughs> if it doesn't, if you go to your Blackboard and you're like, oh my god, I have so many emails, <laughs> make sure you check your notifications. Some professors prefer that you email them through the Blackboard just because it helps them see what course you're, um, it kind of organizes for them in a certain way. Um, so just, I just wanted to make sure that you know that there are two different emails. So you can forward the Blackboard email to Wildcat email, Chico State email. Yeah, um, ITSS can help folks um, if you need help doing something like forwarding your email to a different email that if you think, oh, you know, I want to forward my Chico State email somewhere else, 
um, you can get some help from them and you can submit a ticket on the Chico State website. If you go to the ITSS, they'll have a, a ticket system where you can just type in what you want to do. Um, so that's Google is your friend with all of this, yeah. with all this tech stuff too. I don't know how many times I Googled how to do stuff on Blackboard. La last semester was also the first semester I ever TA'd. So I was like doing the, the teacher Blackboard stuff, like putting grades in and trying to read people's turn it in things that they don't know how to download properly while also figuring it out for myself. And that was, I, yeah, Google is your best friend when you're like, how do I do this? Somebody will tell you. I also like to go out to the ITSS Zoom lobby that they have set up. Like they have all of their students that are normally in the room when you walk into their office under the library. Um, they're just like hanging out in the Zoom lobby waiting for people to drop in. They're super helpful. And like you ask a question and then like five people will get on with you at once and they all just kind of like work together and it's it's awesome. Like they're super nice. They're just sitting there waiting for you to show up so they can help you. So use them. I just have to drop in and say hi. It sounds like they're lonely. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> They're used to people just being like, oh, I have a computer problem. I'm going to drop in for a second. Now they're like, ah. I had one more thing, um, an another tip that I had didn't have to do with tech, though. Is there any, any other questions related to tech or advice related to tech before I move on to something slightly different? My once going twice. Okay, um, so my my other like this is a really big piece of advice that I didn't really learn until I learned it on my own last semester. Um, is so I'm I'm a person who has attention deficit, as I'm sure a lot of people who are in our grad studies programs has, um, and it's this is a lot different than undergrad. Um, for I know for a lot of us, I mean, you made it into grad school, so you're intelligent and you've worked hard and you had the grades to get here and test well and all that stuff. Um, but it, like, kind of like Isaiah was saying, it's all about staying on top of everything. And that's a hard thing for us. So um, something that I would highly, highly, highly suggest you do um, is get in contact um, for any accessibility issue that you might have um, with the Accessibility Resource Center. Um, they're really great. I honestly thought it was just going to be, like Carson, um, I thought it was just going to be like, that documentation that'll help you get extra time on a test or get like a quiet room to do whatever. Um, but it's honestly so much more than that. They get you a counselor. They talk to you about like, what, what are your, what do you struggle with? Like, what do you, do you turn stuff in late on time? Are you late to class all the time? Angie knows I'm late to class all the time. Um, so that's better for me. I'm just like, Hey, I'm here. Um, so, but ARC will really super help you out. Um, they set you up, they figure out what your, what your uh, accessibility requirements would be. They talk to your teachers for you on different things. Um, and they also can set you up with like the technology, the accessible technology, accessibility technology center. I don't know, they'll tell you what it is. Um, and they can help you with all these really great things like Otter AI that helps you with note taking. Um, they have, uh, Kurzweil, which is like a textbook program where they can get you different like textbooks read by people with different accents so you can like have a book on tape to help you get through things and like I don't know about you guys but that kind of stuff I never even really thought about using as a study thing and, I, and I'm still trying to figure out how to work it all out but I know that's gonna make my life a lot better and I'm sure that there are some people out there that will super benefit from that too. It's not scary. Um, it's not where we need to all work together to try to destigmatize uh, mental health especially now. Um, there's a lot of us who had mental health needs before this and now everybody does to some extent I would say. Um, so reach out. Counseling Center is great. They also do like one-on-ones. They have group therapy stuff where you can like talk to other people who are dealing with other stuff like you, um, like stress, positivity, um, and there was another one. I'll come in later when I remember it. That's that attention deficit thing. I can't remember. Um, I'll get that for you, Rachel. I have a follow-up. Um, if, if you're someone who like maybe tried to get help from them in the past and were denied for whatever reason, um, they're reevaluating things right now because the situation has changed so drastically. And if you're a person that never felt like you needed it before, but now you're thinking like, oh, maybe I could use some help with stuff like this, talk to them. Um, they, will, they will work with you and do their best to find ways to help you. 
So yeah. Yeah. And obviously it helps to um, have a doctor that you're seeing that can that can contact them and send paperwork and different stuff like that if you have um, like a document accessibility need. Um, but they will work with you on other stuff too and be able to point you in the right direction for stuff that they can and can't help you with. Um, I know Chico State is really amazing on this aspect compared to where I went for my undergrad. So take advantage of this stuff while you can. It's really great. And do group therapy. It's a good thing. Okay, and I was just gonna let people know that um, we had this scheduled for one hour and we've gone over the hour, but we will, as I say, post the um, answers to your questions on our website. They'll be on the new student orientation page along with this video. Um, and I know that we did have some questions um, that we didn't get to yet that had been submitted. Um, just want y'all to know that we will have some detailed answers on those, very detailed answers um, for those questions. So um, check that and then we'll be emailing you as well. Um, and we will post this probably by Monday and we'll try to have as much information available, but feel free to follow up with us at Grad Studies um, email any of us um, or the basic grad studies email um, or just specific folks that you want to check in with. So we will get information passed on to you and we will get this posted and we're hopeful that it will be posted sometime early next week. Thank you all for coming. Yeah, I'm excited. <laughs>